What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an incredible day. Today I got to harvest almost all of this sweet corn behind me. We're going to cream a little bit of that, put it up in the freezer. But before we do that, I got a couple things on my list I want to get taken care of. First thing on the list has to do with these summer squash and cucumbers right here. These babies have had a good run. We've been getting a lot of good groceries off these guys for the past month or so. But they started to decline in production a little bit and we're starting to see some disease issues. Now I've got these over here that should start producing in the next few weeks, squash and cucumbers. And I've got enough in the fridge to last me for a week or two. So it's time for these to go. Now, these patty pans up here don't look too bad. I have noticed a few squash bug eggs, but not a ton of squash bug pressure so far. But what really ramped up earlier this week when we had all those kind of muggy days where it was on and off sprinkling is the mildew. Now, zucchini leaves will have some natural white variegation on it, but you see that right there? It looks like somebody just sprinkled sugar all over them or confectionery powder or whatever you want to call it that is mildew and it is really ramped up lately and the last thing i want to do is leave these guys in here so they can just keep feeding that fungus we want to get them out of here get them out of the garden get them away from here so we're not creating problems for future years and these cucumbers were looking pretty good a couple weeks ago we had some disease that started right here and it's just kind of slowly cascaded its way down here got into all my pickling cucumbers and then started to get into my slicers here so i'm gonna get it out of here for it just you know grows and thrives even more so i'm gonna harvest what i can here probably won't be a whole lot i just picked these a day or so ago we're gonna get what we can get what's left and then throw these guys in the woods there and as you can see there, not a whole lot there to get. Just a few cucumbers and a few little squash. Now some people, understandably, have a hard time letting go. They see green squash plants like this and think, man, I, I'll just leave them there. I can get a few more harvest off those guys. Even if they're small, I can get a few more squash off of them. But you're doing yourself a lot more damage than you are good by doing that. It's better off to succession plant or have another round plan as opposed to leaving some sickly or diseased or declining production plants in your garden because those disease and pest issues, if you're having them, will compound year over year if you keep leaving plants like that in the soil for too long. So our strategy here is get them out. I got some more coming along. And I've been able to plant three rounds of squash before before it gets too hot now come mid july end of july early august it, it varies from year to year it's just the disease and squash bug pressure is just too high to grow any we'll just pull all of them up stop trying to grow them at that point but we can kind of push it until then and when the plants are young they may have a little bit of disease issues a lot of times you can feed them well enough they'll kind of push through it but these older plants when they start getting plagued with that mildew like that nah no point in trying to save them let's get them out of here get them out of the garden now if you got a burn pile that's a great option i have one of those over there i also have these woods here beside me and it's a shorter walk to the woods and there's the burn pile so we're just going to throw them in there now the cucumber netting i'm going to pull that into the grass over here once all that plant matter decomposes i can roll it up into a small ball and throw it in the trash can take my name out of your paper jane i've seen something that forever changed the game forgive me love for the blame i sent to thee all the fingers i point all right all right all right got that cleaned up nice and quick got some squash plants in the woods over there the netting over behind me in the grass Got a few weeds in there that popped up underneath the squash plants, but it don't look too bad. In a day or so, we'll pull up that drip tape and uh, clean that up with a wheel hoe and we'll be ready to plant something else here. I'm gonna leave the water running because it'll make it easier to get those T-posts out of the ground when it's a little moist as opposed to when it's bone dry. Probably gonna plant some oak tree right here. 
I've got several good varieties haven't grown before that I ordered and some folks are sending me some so that's probably what we're going to do here two long rows of okri and I'm about to start taking applications for pea shellers if there are there any volunteers out there looks like we're going to need a lot of help might even have to buy a new freezer and before we get to that sweet corn one thing I'm going to do on this channel especially when we're done with the crop we're done with several rows like we are now is kind of talk about my winners and losers for the new varieties we try we're all about trying new varieties here we rarely ever grow the same thing over and over just like trying new stuff so let's talk about the winners and losers from this summer squash and cucumber row or rows right here first off we'll start off with this semi crookneck delta squash now this one here is a very big but i really did like this variety it seemed pretty disease resistant it didn't have hardly any mildew on it compared to some of the other stuff in that row really good flavor on these I don't know if it's the most productive that I've ever grown. It's pretty productive. Maybe not the most productive I've ever grown, but I really, really like Delta. So thumbs up, would grow that one again. This grenade squash right here, or this yellow oblong shaped zucchini, whatever you want to call it. These are pretty neat. And I can understand if you have a market stand or something like that, man, people would be all over these. They, they look cool, they're neat. I didn't really care for the flavor and texture of them a whole lot. I don't know what it was. They just seemed a little bland to me. They're really cool to grow. They produce a decent amount, but I don't think I would grow these again. So thumbs down on the grenade. Then I don't have one in front of me, but the spineless beauty zucchini, which I've grown for several years. It always does well, did well again this year. Thumbs up, keeping my opinion on that one. Good zucchini variety. This patty pan here, which was supposedly partial eclipse, but it doesn't look anything like the pictures um, what I saw before I planted it. So I don't really know what this is. Maybe it is partial eclipse and it just never developed those uh, striations of color or whatever. Anyway, this is really, really tasty patty pan. I put it right up there with the sunburst. Really like this variety, whatever it is. So I give that one a thumbs up. Now to the cucumbers. So we had three varieties of cucumbers. Parisian gherkin, Expedition, which is a pickler, and Bristol, which is the slicer. The Parisian gherkin, big thumbs down on that one. It just can't hang down here in this heat and humidity. Just didn't make it. Didn't really produce a whole lot. Just, it just didn't, didn't do well. It may be a great variety in other places, but down here, it just couldn't hang. This Expedition pickling cucumber. It's pretty good. It's nothing like a max pack or hopefully what I'm gonna see from this Supremo variety I have planted over there. It's okay, it's pretty good gynoecious variety. I would uh, equate it, it reminds me a lot of Calypso. So that's what I would compare it to. Considering there are several other better varieties out there in my opinion, probably not gonna grow the Expedition anymore. Thumbs down on it. This Bristol Slicer, I really like this one. Uh, probably not as much as I like Olympus or it's Olympian. Hold on a second. I got sweat in my eyes. Probably not as much as the Olympian, but it's pretty close. I like the Bristol. Probably would grow that one again. Seem to be really, uh, have a really good disease package on it. So we got some winners and losers. The ones we'd keep would be the Delta, whatever that patty pan is, Spineless Supreme, and then the Bristol Cucumber. Now let's get to this corn. Now I've already given away about a row of this and we've been eating a few ears, but the rest of it is hopefully going in the freezer. And we finally start to see some real good drying on the silks. So you can see right there when they get nice and crispy like that, you know it's ready to harvest. That guy right there could probably stand to go a few more days, but I'm not gonna be super selective going in here. If there's some that are just obviously not even close, I'll leave them just as kind of a late snack. We're going to get anything that's close to being ready and we're going to cream it up. I'm just going to harvest it out here and then I'll make me a little setup in the barn there to do my shucking and silking in the shade. Now when I was a kid and we used to put up corn, they'd make us get up first thing in the morning, sunrise, and get out there and harvest that corn. The plants would be wet and it was just humid and sticky outside and I hated that. Now that I'm grown, I can do it whenever I want to. And I like to wait till it gets good and hot. I had a couple meetings this morning and now it's good and hot this afternoon. Those plants are dry. Gonna work off a little sweat equity 
and we're gonna get it picked. Let the dust settle, let go of the pedal, there's too much here. Let these towers turn to rivers, let these instincts steer. Let the dust settle, let the stormy weather ride out disappear. When the sunlight shines, let it all come clear. And I feel like I could do that all day long. So there's what we got. Not too bad off six rows considering we already harvested one of the seven and i don't know what that equates to in official agronomic units of measurement but that's a good bit of corn right there and there ought to be plenty for our freezer now let's put this in the buggy and go get in the shade all right i got my setup here got me a trash can for my husks got all my corn We'll put our silk corn in this basket right here. Got my corn silking brush. And I have informed everybody that needs to know that this is where I'll be for the next couple of hours. Right here, shucking and silking corn. Brooklyn took the boys to vacation Bible school, so she'll probably help me later on in the process as far as creaming it and bagging it. But uh, let's just sit here, find you a nice peaceful spot. Nice cool breeze coming through here. Not gonna need the fan. As of right now, and we got some real pretty ears of corn right here. Real pretty ears of corn. Now when I was picking this stuff, I didn't feel any worms. Usually you can feel them at the top of the ear. I didn't feel any. That don't mean we won't have absolutely no worms. Uh, usually it's hard to grow a crop of corn and not have any worms. So we'll just see what we've got there. It looks like we got some nice pretty plump uh, ears of corn there. It is plumped up really well just in the last few days after we got that rain. Now I'm not a huge stickler for getting every single silk out of there. I just try to do the best I can and uh, they all kind of melt away. Seems like they do at least when you cook it or cream it or put it all together. So we'll just get most of the silks out of there and we'll start filling up these bins right here. So we're a little over halfway through shucking all the corn we pulled. Got a bucket and a half and that crate over there left. And we got this guy filled up. I need to go and take it inside so I don't have to worry about the flies on it. We got some nice looking corn here. This Yellowstone super sweet corn. Had a few ears where the tip didn't fill out all the way. That's a pollination issue. But a lot of them are nice. Look at that guy right there. That's pretty, ain't it? These ears are a lot more stocky than some of the varieties I've grown in the past. Some sweet corn are a little more long and slender. These make some nice stocky cobs there. And that's some tasty stuff. So let me get this inside and we'll start working on crate number two. See the red dust swirling, the red dust swirling, the red dust swirling on my knees. See the red dust swirling, the red dust all right that's all of it my shuck bucket is full this crate there is full at about 15 years there that i'm going to say put those in the fridge eat that off the cob i think we may do a little low country bowl this weekend so i'll need those ears for that but that worked out just perfect and now we need to get this one inside and the hard work is done. The rest of this can be done in the AC. All right, so I'm in my office here. Better place as any to do this corn. You can guarantee doing this, you're gonna make a mess. Uh, I got some plastic down here. I'm probably still gonna have corn all over everything. You just have to wipe everything down. But we try to minimize the damage. So got me a little table here. I can sit here and watch TV, watch soap operas, whatever you want to. Now, I bought this thing right here at the hardware store, thinking this was going to be the cat's meow. I've seen people use it on videos, and I threw away $12, or I paid $12 for a piece of wood. It just, it don't do it for me. Maybe I'm an idiot, just don't know what I'm doing, but I couldn't get it to work right. So this is the way I do it. Got my old trusty bench made right here, and uh, try, try I don't make me cut myself. I'm going to just cut those kernels off like this. You giving me some more corn, buddy? Thank you. 
So we cut them off and then I'm going to take my knife and we're just going to kind of scrape up against this cob there. And that's what's giving you the cream, so to say, getting those juices out of there. So it's kind of like a combination of doing it whole kernel and creaming it. Now the videos I saw this thing, the people that were doing this, they weren't even cutting the kernels. It was just mashing everything. And it seemed like to me that was wasting a lot of the corn. So we cut it off and then we scrape it like this right here. I, I, there is a, I got one, two, three, four. I got you four corns. You got me four corns? Yeah. You don't got corn on your head from being in here. So <laughs> it's a good idea to wear some safety glasses. I did have this thing a couple years ago. I bought this little thing come with a drill bit and you drill into the corn and then drill it through this little tube and it shucks it and then um, cuts it off or creams it. However, the problem with that thing was all your ears had to be relatively the same and size. Is there one more corn right there? There is one more corn right there. And if all your ears wasn't the same size, it wouldn't trim it the right way and I didn't like that either. So to me, just relax, sit in here, get your knife, may have to sharpen it a couple times and just cut it off and enjoy yourself. So I know Travis was hating on this thing, but I grew up using one of these with my Mima. She swears by it. She used it year after year. I think what the difference is, is what kind of cream corn do you want? This is gonna shave and like squish out all the juices of your corn. And if you have a really juicy, sweet corn, you're gonna wanna use this if you like that typical, really soft, like almost grit texture cream corn. My problem with it was the, the daggum blade on it wasn't very sharp. And well, I cut my hand trying to jab it through there. I mean, this corn is, it's some crunchy corn. I mean, it's good, but it's got like a really firm texture to it. Well, that's, that's one reason that's probably not the best thing for it but we like the corn more like kernel corn with a little bit of juice so this is not i mean you can call this cream and try but this isn't really cream in it right it's this not is cutting it off the cob yeah um and when we cook it sometimes we just cook it with more butter okay get some water oh okay can you hold on just a second so there are lots of different things that you can use besides just this knife to make this easier. <laughs> this is the way my grandma always did it. Well, there are things on Amazon. Yeah. We, we're aware of that, but sometimes when your corn's ready, you got some time, you just gotta do it. Last year, I remember staying up till midnight shucking corn and trying to get this over with. I got a head start today. Yeah, a little bit. But as Travis said, those juices and stickiness are going to fly everywhere. Like, just sitting right here, they're getting all over me. So just know that. Wherever you do it, if you're going to do it inside your house, if you're going to do it outside, whatever, you're going to have sticky juices, corn, everywhere. Um, we have gnats bad down here. Flies right. too. Right. So, so it's really hard to do outside. You yeah. cannot do it outside unless you have one of those huge fans. If you have a canning plant, a lot of, in the south, we have canning plants. But they have really particular hours and I think they're made more for people who do not work. And that is just not feasible for us. We cannot get to a can of plant in the middle of the week in the day. So that's why we do a lot of it at home. Um, but this would, if you have corn, you have a can of plant, you can go to it. That's where I advise going because you can wash it off. Uh-oh. Good to have two containers when you're doing this. Good to have kind of a flat container like this to cut into and then dump it in a larger bowl there now you ain't got to do all this in one day i just like to do it all in one day because once i get started i have a hard time stopping especially if you grow some of these super sweet varieties where you've got a longer harvest and processing window you could harvest your corn if you got a big enough freezer or excuse me refrigerator or cold storage you can harvest your corn one day process it the next day. You can even cut it one day and let it sit in the fridge for a day like this until you cook it and freeze it. So you can spread it out if you want to. I find it's better just to go ahead and knock it all out one day and be done with it. It's time, it's corn time. That's right, it's corn time. So on my previous video, 
when I ate an ear of this raw out in the field, had several people comment on how loud the crunch noise was. And I, I don't know if it's just this Yellowstone variety. I'm thinking it may be a thing with all the um, augmented super sweet varieties, but it does have quite the crunch. It's got a good texture to it. really pops when you bite into it. The downside of that is there's not as much juice here as you might find with something like a Silver Queen. So I don't know that this would be the ideal variety for if you, all you was going to do was cream it. Now we like ours kind of hybrid with some kernels in there and a little bit of juice. I don't like just straight, just kind of the runny stuff. So it just depends on what you like. And this is a, a good variety, a fast growing variety. Uh, I don't know that I would recommend this variety to a first time corn grower because these super sweets they grow out faster and you got to be pretty timely with your water and your fertilization and it was a little tricky this year because we had such a cool spring we didn't have what they call the, enough heat units really to get everything to work properly so if you're a beginner corn grower you might want to try something like silver queen some of the more standard varieties and then kind of work your way up to these here but these are definitely uh, a lot better to me they taste a lot better a lot sweeter uh, I'll take this over Silver Queen any day of the week you just got to kind of know what you're doing when you're growing this stuff so my bowls are about full I gotta get some more bowls I got this guy in here who's supposed to be in bed but just loves helping anything with the garden so we got our cobs right here I'll show you how clean we're getting those so got those nice and scraped and that's how many ears we got left just to give you an idea of how much we're getting and we'll let you know how many bags we get total when we're done but i still got several ears in that basket still got that basket to go and this is how much corn we've got so far uh probably gonna need to sharpen my knife pretty soon but that is some sweet delicious stuff right there it smells so good man it's sweet probably the sweetest corn we've ever grown We got plenty left to cut? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I are you going to stay up and help me or are you going to uh, go to bed? Uh, I'm going to get some more bowls. Okay, so it's getting late and we're in the final steps. Late is an understatement, y'all. It's almost midnight. And <laughs> we are still doing all this. Okay, so we use a food saver. And, <coughs> excuse me. I always find it handy to go ahead and flip the edges over because you don't want these. If you're also using a food saver, you don't want this wet and yucky. If you just want to use regular Ziploc bags, that's fine. The way, that's the way my mama has done it my entire life. But she's very specific about her Ziploc bags. You want to make sure you get the freezer bags with the really thick zipper at the top. And then she sort of, a lot of people either use a straw, which I think is kind of gross, to suck the air out. Or you just really make sure you push all the air out. So do you want to tell them about cooking the corn real quick? Yes. So there are multiple ways to do this. You can, if you don't have near as many ears as we had, how many ears do you think we had, Trav? Like 300? Oh, that's a lot. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of ears. So if you're only doing 50 ears or so, I say you blanch your ears first and then you cut off the kernels or you can cut the kernels off and you don't even blanch it, you just freeze it. But just know you can't use that corn raw. So if you're going to make like a raw corn salad or a salsa, you would have to cook any corn that had not been blanched yet. Or you can do it the way we did it, which was we cut it off the um, cob raw and then we cooked it afterwards. If you were not making it where it had any cream in it and you just wanted these to be only kernels, then I say you add water cook it three minutes or so then throw it in ice water that's the typical way to do it but the way we did it was we cooked it on the stove brought it to a boil cooked it three or four minutes um some of the corn i did have to add like a cup of water to a huge pot of corn to add a little bit more juice to it so i had some liquid to cook in this one had a good amount of liquid already so i use a measuring cup because i like all my bags to be about the same size and I've been scooping three cups in here. If you're using a food saver, you really don't want to put much more than about halfway full of the bag because when you lay it flat, it really smushes out. 
You want me to do it? Go for it. Okay. So just put that edge right there. Close it. Lock it. I put it on moist and gentle. Hit back in. And seal. All right. It says it's done. Open it up. There we go. It's sealed. And then I just rinse this off. This is like corn juice. And then I lay it down like this and put it in the freezer. You want to lay it like that so it's easy to store in your freezer. If you dump it in your freezer like this, with as much corn as we have, that's not going to fit good. So lay it flat and store it like that. So before this last batch, we had 13 bags in the freezer. That's right. So probably get close to 20, somewhere between 15 and 20. Um, it's a big gap there. <laughs> I think we'll get a solid 16. 16 or so? Okay. <laughs> so just to give you an idea of how many bags we're getting per that plot of corn. That's about a 25 by 40 plot, and I did give away almost one whole row of it. Okay. So had we not done that, we probably would have got well over 20 mm -hmm. bags. And I tapped out on my corn skinning with about 20 to 30 years left you've been doing it about four hours yeah and uh i said hey i'll just give somebody some fresh shook silk corn so i put it in bags i've done all the work for you and i'm gonna put it in the fridge and uh we'll just give that away tomorrow she mentioned that the last batch you didn't have to add as much water and i kind of figured out with my knife as i went along if i didn't cut as much off as far as when i'm cutting the You're kernels opening the kernels up more right then there's a lot more juice to get but if right. i cut them pretty deep there's not a whole lot of juice because it's all in the kernel so That's right. i got a little bit better at it as we went along i still like my bench made a lot better than that little rig uh, but we'll keep that rig because yeah you like we can music. try right and if you have an electric knife that works really well too it's real quick and that definitely releases a lot more juice yeah. It's all messy. doesn't matter. And I know that may not sound like a whole lot of corn, but I mean, to us, it's a Pretty lot. And there's nothing like fresh corn. So we cook this multiple different ways. Um, sometimes they're drier bags that don't have as much liquid in it. We put in a skillet with butter and make like skillet corn. Yeah. We love up. having it in the freezer. The boys, and, it's like the one vegetable they really eat without complaint. <laughs> and yes, it is a it is a good bit of work, but we only do it once a year. And we just kind of hammer it out and just get in your mind. And then it it doesn't matter how early we get started. It always takes to about <laughs> 11 or 11.30, seems like. But I hope you enjoyed the process going along. I'm sure everybody out there does it a little differently. Like yeah. I said, we don't like just straight milk, so we don't cream it to the extent some people do. Right. Uh, we like a little bit of texture there. Everybody does it different, but maybe you learn something from the way we do it here. So let us know in the comments below how you do it different, how you cream corn different, or do you like to put it on the kernel, or maybe you just freeze the whole cob. Let us know what kind of variations you have to the process. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Bye. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life